Ms. Wiley, you're recognized. Microphone. I'm usually quite loud, but thank you for pointing that out. Uh, Chair Jordan, Ranking Member Plaskett, members of the subcommittee, I, I want to thank you for having me here today. I have introduced written testimony, and I did have a summary of my oral testimony, and I am going to depart from it after listening to the openings and these proceedings. This week began the sentencing of Robert Bowers, who murdered 11 people, wounded six others because their faith was Judaism and because they were in a synagogue to worship. Robert Bowers expressed on social media for a very long time deeply anti-Semitic hateful statements. He did it and used Gab which is a platform that was deplatformed by Twitter because of its constant space it provided to hate that has actually become embodied in the most violent anti-Semitic act we know to have happened on our shores in the history of this country. And I will tell you, as a black woman who lived through COVID in New York City, where we watched too many images of refrigerated trucks with the bodies of loved ones because there were too many deaths to accommodate in morgues that surpassed, surpassed the deaths during the Spanish flu and where in this country we have lost over one million of our loved ones. And for the black community, for the Native American community, for so many communities of color in particular where our rates of death were three to four times those of some other groups, three to four times. I want to agree with Mr. Kennedy I want to agree that it's tr incredibly important for us to be kind and respectful to one another. It is incredibly important for us to be able to understand our experiences across our differences and to have a platform for those communications. And it is deeply vital that they be based in fact, not fiction. And without regard to the intent or what is in the mind of anyone, which I cannot say, including what is in the mind of any of those who are testifying here today. But what I can say is when you make a statement that suggests that based on race, based on religion, based on anything other than facts that you may have somehow not been targeted, but other racial groups have, that by definition feeds into something very dangerous in this country that is actually impacting lives and in some instances taking them. And what I will say about the opinion in this case, and I am here to talk about Missouri versus Biden, is that in this case, we can talk all day about the very specific facts, and there is factual inaccuracy in some of the fact statements in Judge, in Judge Dougherty's opinion. But the most important one is the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, widely, widely believed by all, for very good reason, to not be out of step with conservative ideology vacated that preliminary injunction. And I want to point to something else, because one of the things that that injunction said was that our government, responsible for public health, responsible for national security, which, by the way, even under the Trump administration, the Department of Homeland Security said it is domestic terrorism that is our greatest national threat. 
that even that it had in the injunction a statement that the federal government could not collaborate or partner or jointly work with institutes, researchers, including the Stanford Internet Observatory, could not, in terms of identifying, understanding, or even talking about the deletion or removal of anything, even if, even if that research actually demonstrated that those social media companies were violating their own policy in a way that was dangerous for people and for our democracy. So yes, let's be kind, let's be respectful, and let's descend into a real discussion of facts where we can disagree about their meaning, but not about their existence. Thank you.